Hey there folks, Gary Bradley here. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can determine the quality of your images inside of Adobe Photoshop. So whether you're going to use your artwork on screen or in print, there are some criteria that you'll have to work to to get good results from your images. So we're going to look at ways in which you can find the maximum natural print size for your images. And then also, how do you determine the size of something that needs to be added inside another application like InDesign? So I'm going to show you some neat tricks and workarounds for this. So I'm starting in design. So if you're here watching this video, wanting to know about quality of images and you were expecting Photoshop, don't worry. I'm going to jump over to Photoshop in a, in a short while. But uh, in this kind of real world example, uh, I need to fill this place all the frame, the big X on this layout for this magazine with an image of someone surfing. So I want to find an image to drop in here, which will involve me browsing on the web, going to a website, downloading some artwork, and then we'll take a look at it in Photoshop. And then I'm going to show you a workaround of how to get the right artwork in here, the right kind of quality for this specific page. So I'm going to jump to my web browser. Uh, and here I have uh, one of the websites that I'm sure lots of people know about now. I've been using Unsplash for many years. It is a great source for free artwork. So I need a surface. So I'm going to do a keyword search for surfing and then see what I get in here. Um, so just going to have a quick whiz through this. I actually need something that is landscaped in orientation. So I'm going to change the orientation in here to landscaped first off. And I think I'll go with this one. So I'm going to hover over and then click on download. And then uh, as if by magic, that will then appear in my folder that I've got ready here for us uh, in downloads. So if I open that up, um, this is the image, but we at this moment have no idea what the quality of this file is. We don't know what the width and the height is. So we, before we do anything to this image, to use it in our publication or wherever it is, we want to make sure that it's going to be good enough quality. So that underpins everything. If it's not good enough quality, there's no point using it. So you will hear people refer to things like PPI, DPI, resolution. Now, these are all terms that try and identify the quality of an image made of pixels like we have here in front of us. When you have artwork on screen, that is composed of squares called pixels. And we need to have a certain amount of pixels for every square inch that it's used to get the right kind of quality. And then when it's printed out, it will then be turned into dots. So that's why it's called then dots per inch. So PPI for on screen and squares, DPI for when it's printed and turned into dots and we have to have the right kind of quality for every square inch that it's used. So, whew. quickest thing to do is go straight to one of the most important options inside of Adobe Photoshop, which is the image menu and then choose image size. So when this pops up on screen, you'll get a small preview at 100% size in this dialog box and then there'll be some kinds of values in here. Now, what we really need to do first of all is um, get the units to a size that we want to work with. So if, for example, at the moment, just for simplicity, if I change this from percent to centimeters, say for example, this is very typical of what you'll get. Whether you take a picture with a digital camera, whether you download it, you'll see in here now, I'm looking at something and wow, that, I could use this image at 182 centimeters by 122, roughly speaking. Uh, and then, well, no, you couldn't. Um, because it's not just about the width and the height, it's about the quality for every square inch that that image is used. And if I'm going to use it in print, this is no good. 72 pixels per inch. That means if I zoom into this image in the background, eventually I'll get these things. So there's squares in the background. They are pixels. Um, they're the smallest unit of information inside of an image. Uh, it's an amalgamation of two words, picture element. And we have to have... Um, for screen purposes, 72 of those squares for every square inch that it's used on a screen display on the web. Now, when it comes to things like a, a presentation, if you're going to have like a PowerPoint presentation and project from a projector, something like that, then that figure will have to go to at least 96 in here to get the right kind of quality. If you're going to then use your artwork in print, for example, in-house print, you could go um, for lower values. It's probably the lowest is really sort of 220 pixels in here for the lowest kind of size that you'll be wanting to still get good results. But if you're going to print uh, a external print provider, um, then you really need to make sure that the resolution is set to 300 in there. Now, this is the big mistake because you uh, this dial box doesn't tell you what you should do. 
But and what a lot of people do is they look at this and think, right, okay, well, um, I'll just go to resolution and change that to, well, 300. Fantastic. No, it's not. This image was just over 51 megabytes. If I now add the extra quality in there, it was never in the image to start off with. I faked that. If I was to click OK now, notice that the image proposed size will be 889 megabytes and you, you get absolutely no benefit whatsoever. So what you have to do is I hold down my Alt key and then it turns the cancel button into reset, reset the dialog box, go in here. If I change this to say centimeters, then what you do is you turn off the resample checkbox. That will create a link between not only the width and the height, but the quality. So all you then do is after that step, you type in your desired quality. So for me, if it's print, then it will be 300. And then notice that the physical size reduces. So it's now showing me that this image, it's natural maximum print size at 300 pixels per inch. The minimum for professional print output is just under 44 centimeters wide uh, by 29 centimeters tall. So I now know that's the limitation for this image. If I use it bigger, then there's a chance it'll become blurred or pixelated. You'll see kind of jagged outlines around the edges of things and, and generally the quality won't be there. That's the key thing. Turn off resample and then you type in your desired resolution. Um, and so from here, I now have a very good idea of what the quality is. That's how you find it. And from here, I'll click OK. So if you're trying to remember all this, and I appreciate there's a lot to take in. The thing to remember is when you're using a digital photograph in your artwork, whether it's screen or whether it's in print, the bigger you use that artwork in physical size, the lower the quality will be. If you use a smaller size, then the quality will increase because every image still has the same number of pixels, but it's all down to how, how many there are for every square inch that it's used. If you make an image very, very small, you are packing together in a much smaller area, the same number of pixels. So there's more detail, more information, therefore more quality. If you use that at a bigger size, then you're gonna lose that quality because you are stretching out the number of pixels for every square inch. So basic principles is the bigger the digital photograph, the lower the quality. Now, if you remember at the beginning of the video, I had a layout inside of InDesign that needed an image. Well, I'll use this image, but I'm gonna show you a really neat trick that will save you lots of time. How you get this artwork into InDesign at the exact size that you need it at. So I'll jump over to InDesign. On my layout in here, this is what I have. So I wanna make sure I, you know, I have the right kind of artwork in here at the right size that's required. I don't necessarily want to have a huge image if I, if I can save it, because that will obviously save on the, the file size and all that kind of thing. So I have a placeholder frame here that I want to fill. Now I've selected it and then up here inside of InDesign, it will tell me that this frame is 336 millimeters by 267. So how do I find an image that will work in this situation? Well, all you have to do is with that frame selected, you go to edit and you choose copy. It will remember essentially the width and the height of whatever you copied. And then if I go back to Adobe Photoshop, all you then have to do is go to file and choose new. And then you'll notice that in the new document dialog box, here is the clipboard. And across on the right hand side, you will see that it's uh, picked up in pixel units in here. These, ignore them, change the units to millimeters. And in my case here, notice that they match what I copied exactly. I know that I need to create a graphic that's 300 pixels. Um, so I'll swipe over that and I'll type in 300. So I now have got a piece of artwork. Uh, I'm going to create a blank canvas inside of Photoshop and I'm going to put artwork into it. But I know that it's going to be of the right size. So once I'm done, go down to the bottom, click on create. And there I have that now matches the area that I need to drop an image into inside of InDesign. If I go back to this one in here with my move tool active, I can drag this up to the bar up at the top, hover over the tab, drag back down here and then drop it into this canvas. And you can see here now it appears if I move this around, I've got quite a bit of image to work around with in here. So with that done, then what I could do from this point here is just go to file, then go to save. And then on the desktop and go to my links folder and I'll just call this. Yes, I know, very imaginative, but I'm going to call it Surfer and I'm going to save it as a PSD. So Photoshop document, click on save, and then I can go down to InDesign, 
So back in InDesign, I've got the frame selected. All I have to do is go to File, choose Place, and then on my desktop, Links, Surfer, click on Open, and there we go. Um, I could even go to the window menu, go down the list in here to Info, and there we have it. Because I got the width and the height exactly right, and I set the document up in Photoshop at 300 pixels per inch, the thing that matters inside of InDesign is the effective PPI. That's what it's going to output to if I leave it as it is at the moment. And that quality is good enough for professional print. So that's a trick that I use on a regular basis. For getting artwork that I need to fill inside of another application, go back to Photoshop, get those units in there, and then set the canvas up to be exactly the right size. As always, if you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, folks. And if you want to get more video content like this in the future, you can always subscribe. You can click on the bell to get a notification every time I post on here, which is every Friday. And until next time, farewell.